Air monitoring in Wood Buffalo is perhaps the, the most extensive of any region or airshed in Alberta. Uh, the types of air monitoring that, uh, that, that uh, are being done is very much state of the art. Ambient air is drawn through this glass manifold and passed onto the back of this continuous analyzer. This analyzers monitor for specific parameters. This analyzers are scanned five times a minute with this data logger. This data logger then transfers the data to a hub in Edmonton, and through a hub in Edmonton, it transfers the data to our website for data that is available or monitored in Wood Buffalo in real time. Exposure is the key link between pollutants and health effects. The time spent inside your home, uh, perhaps your, your, what you do at work, are very, very strong determinants of exposure to air pollutants. The emissions from industry uh, play a very small role. The findings uh, uh, clearly show that air quality in the Wood Buffalo region uh, has not changed very much over the past 10 years. There is a belief that uh, the environment is being affected. And from my point of view, there is also a belief that people could be being exposed out there one can make a link between what's happening in terms of what's being released into the environment and what you're observing in the environment. Alberta Environment works closely with industrial players across the province and also environmental associations, but we are a regulator and we do have the authority to take enforcement actions when necessary. Although the trends indicate good air quality, uh, odor episodes do occur. So the source of the odor could be uh, something that's uh, natural. It could be like forest fires, or it could be uh, decaying vegetation. It could be related to industrial activities. It also could be related to vehicle emissions. The Bird Environment employs about 90 field staff across the province to ensure that the rules are being followed. Processes that are used in monitoring air quality can be in stationary locations or they can actually be in mobile locations where we can actually move a vehicle around to different areas, uh, track the odor if wind changes are occurring or uh, different times of the day or different uh, seasons of the year. If we looked at the region in North America with the poorest air quality, uh, that's the Houston-Galveston region and it's, uh, much, it's the largest industrialized area in, uh, in North America. So if we consider the types of air quality that the concentrations they have there and we wanted to say where is a region that has better air quality, well let's uh, talk about the city of Toronto. So uh, not quite as industrialized, however largely populated. And if we want to go to talk about well where is air quality even better, then we can go to the city of Edmonton. Uh, it's a much smaller populated uh, area and uh, uh, overall much less emissions, better air quality. And then finally, uh, let's talk about uh, Fort Mackay in the Wood Buffalo region and even many aspects Fort McMurray. Air quality is even better there. Changes in the environment tend to occur very slow. They, they are very subtle and one would expect that it would take uh, at least several decades before you can see changes that are very strong in their signal. I think it would be very important to, to acknowledge that the majority of emissions coming from these development activities are from surface related activities. So uh, in situ activities have much smaller emissions and we would expect to see perhaps even smaller changes in air quality that we have observed over the past 10 years. <laughs>